Welcome to Meaningful Interviews. My guest today is an old friend, Reb Zalman Sirota. He happens to be a family, a family relative. Uh, his wife is related to my wife, Zayda Reb Zalman Sarebransky. What, what, what may, made me ask you, Reb Zalman, to, to come on and talk to us is because of your background. You know, you were uh, born and raised in Russia, USSR, whatever they called it at the time. And um, you came to Israel, I believe, and then to Israel, and then you came to America. So you have really three, three parts to your life. And uh, I'd uh, like to hear a little bit about your family background and your upbringing, and we'll go from there, please. Well, it's not really three parts. Yeah, I was in I wasn't in Israel for relatively short, just number of months, a relatively short period. Okay. Anyway, I, my life. I was actually born in uh, Tashkent, Uzbekistan. Uh, still, family was there. Still, from uh, evacuation from during the Second World War, and. Uh, my father's family actually was there even before and uh, was they still stayed there besides my father still they left russia and uh, my grandfather there Motha Sirota, was uh, really uh, the one who hosted many refugees during the second world war and uh, many, many hundreds of people just survived uh Begashmis. Thanks to him, uh, his uh, house and yard and uh, everything was filled with, with people, the refugees. He would just go to the train station and find uh, someone he saw a, a from need or someone like was coming from Poland, from Russia, from whichever places. And uh, he would take uh, them to his house until we, find, we found uh, some, some other place. And uh, and later years also he uh, maintained a minion in his uh, st little street where he lived uh, three times a day, totally until and all the years till he left Russia. And in his uh, house, and he, he was he baked matzah for for the whole city uh, of Tashkent all all the years. And uh, that I remember. And uh, in general, he was a real Balsham spirit. He said Tilim every day, by heart he knew Tilim. Uh, and the whole Tilim he said, and whenever he, whichever way he was going, whichever place he was going, he was just saying Tilim. And uh, he was actually a Braslava Hossid, um, not from birth actually, but he was a Yosem, and that's whom, whom he befriended. And uh, he became a Breslova Hossid. Uh, his, I believe his family actually was Chernobyl Hossidim from before. And, uh, but he became a Breslova Hossid. And as soon as it was possible, he actually had Basiras Nefesh to go to Uman in the, in the communist years, along with our family, with our, uh, with Rabbi Broad, Hatsko Binyamin's uh, father, Hatsko Broad's father, and Khan uh, Binyamin, yeah, was his name, and, uh, and others. Okay, that's just a little bit from uh, for where I was born, but then, because of circumstances, we, I was only, I believe, uh, six months old or something like that, we, we moved to Omsk, to Siberia. Because my other grandfather, uh, Rabbi Soil Olidord, was uh, he was a, Cherno, uh, a square horse, and uh, he was he was uh, bothered too much by KGB. He was giving a shiur and and was I'm talking about still Stalin's years. And he was giving a shiur between Minha, Marivan, and Yankees. He was a Ida Bantera. 
and he still he still managed to before the revolution and all the upheavals in Ukraine and the and the pogroms, he was still was able to learn for 15 money in yeshiva. And uh, he was a banter, he had a very good head also. And uh, they bothered him, KGB, and only you can't really, whatever, as much as you can, you try to not to give him any information. But they wanted from him, he should spy on others. He should tell about Chabad. And they threatened him, otherwise, uh, they had enough information on him for his uh, activities. And uh, uh, so, the only way to do basically was to go some remote place, someplace else, a different republic, and, and uh, the opportunity presented itself because my mother finished university uh, in, in, in Tashkent, where she studied studied mathematics, and uh, and instead they wanted to take her for a PhD program, but instead she volunteered basically to go there when specialists were needed because in that part of Russia during the war, they had all the military uh, factories. They moved there to the, far from the front lines and, that, and they, produced, uh, they produced the tanks and things like that. Uh, but the, after the war, they kind of wanted to start uh, producing other uh, diff diff different type of more like what people needed for just for life to recover from the war, etc. So we needed specialists, we needed also mathematicians in order to figure out how different uh, uh, metals can go together, can go together. There was a lot of math involved there, whatever. So she volunteered. And uh, it's a separate story how she, about Shabbos, how she managed all the years the university without, without Michal Shabbos. And then in, uh, where she was sent, uh, it was her muzzle that uh, she would have found some other way, I guess, anyway. But, uh, but her muzzle, but that Shabbos was the day off. We didn't have enough electricity still there after the war. So every factory had a different day off. And the way, the way she was uh, sent to this lab to work, the day off was Shabbos. Huh. <laughs> yes. And, and because of that, my father, whichever job he had, was able to claim he wants also Shabbos off because he wants to be home with his wife the right. day she's off. Right. Okay. <laughs> so, <laughs> and the interesting thing, after she had to work there for three years, after she finished her three years, we moved to Moscow. Uh, uh, a month later, she got a letter from a coworker that uh, now it's ready, it became enough electricity, but Baruch Hashem, now it's ready, sun, Sunday is the day off. <laughs> so, as Goha Protis. Yeah. And uh, well, a lot of us Goha Protis in, in, in Russia, uh, in uh, my, my grandparents' lives and my parents' lives and my, my life too. May I ask you a question yeah. for a moment? Yeah. What, what, what was the reason uh, they moved to Tons, to Siberia? I mean, I, um, why? Uh, the reason why? was because, because my, my grandfather, my mother's father, we saw Lolidor, the KGB was really on his case. And uh, uh, and, and there, whatever it was called at that time, we were really on, on his case. We wanted him to become an informant. Uh, uh, on, so, on, on, so, on Abach Sidim, on, on Chabad Sidim, yeah. Right, so you, in other words, in and he, 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 he claimed that he doesn't know them, he's a square Hasid. He didn't deny that he's from and everything, but but he doesn't really, he's not a friend of theirs, he doesn't know them. So they, they but they, it didn't kind of work. But they said they make sure to become a friend. Go, whatever, right. find out, you know how we work, whatever. Yeah. And uh, otherwise right. we will, you, 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 we will, will take care of you, whatever. Right, and, uh, right. Yeah. So, right. So, yeah. so that's why they left Tashkent. Yes. Right. Yes. Another, another question. Um, did your Zayda, did your grandfather and Mordecha ever take you along to Uman? No, but my father went a few, a couple times a uh, few times in order to be much in the minion. We didn't have enough brass around all of Russia to, to have our own minion. 
Are you talking so, about are you talking Rab about Rab 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 Zam Leib Stulin used to go to the who was a father in law of Ham Ham Minyam and Broad? So he he, he no the other way around. He was aging by Ham Ham Minyam and Broad. So they he used to go to to be Muslim with Minyam. You talking about Andre Shoshana or just during the Rosh Hashana, year? Rosh Hashana, for Rosh Hashana. Yeah. Yeah. Did, did, do you have any recollections of your Zayda talking about Breslov uh, Hasidim, Hasidis, and oh, during the, yeah, during the war, uh, one of the people who stayed for a while by my Zayda, and who kind of my Zayda became very close to was the big Breslov Hasid who was later. The, the, Mashpia, the leader and the Brasov Akloys in Yerushalayim, the Meishorim. Yeah, so he also stayed in my, my Zayda's house for a while until we found some other lodg uh, lodgings or whatever. He stayed for a while. Then his daughter wrote a book actually, and she mentions that, she writes about that too. Uh huh. So yeah. your your family and the Blavitz of Bender had a a, a, a curious relationship. Uh, well, not me. I didn't know Rabbi Blavitz of Bender. My mother, my Zayda, because once he was in Russia, but then after the war he left with Polish citizens. He actually was a Polish citizen. Actually, he his story is all he, he kind of uh, he went into in order to be in woman for Rosh Hashanah while being in Poland. He. Uh, entered illegally Russia in order to be in Newman for Rosh Hashanah. But then he couldn't get back anymore. And they arrested him and was the whole thing later, whatever. But he went, but he, during the war, he ended up in Tashkent. Uh -huh. my, understand, my understanding is this, that maybe Yitzhak Bender was uh, at the Hoi the Mensch. I heard he was- Yes, uh... yes, yes. He was a governor, he governed for hours. He was a, he was a, he was a real, he was a real, uh, See the street. He was a Brazil, but was yeah. a real yes. I'm, I'm he was curious, a Palmadrega. Yeah. A Palmadrega. I'm curious. Yeah. Do, do you see a commonality between, you know, Braslov and Chabad in certain areas? I'm just curious if you ever thought about it. In the in the Indian, in the Indian of Mr. Snafesh, even though there are very few Braslov Sidim who left, but those few were real, uh, really, really, real bow Mr. Snafesh. Yes. And and uh, was there any antagonism? Also, uh, yes. Also, also, the government was stronger against them because also because they knew that they are very strong, so they kind of persecuted them over the years. Probably after Chabad, the, the, the next uh, group which, were, which the government was after. Okay, uh, I'm also asking. I understand what you said. Um, yes. During those years, did you feel any uh, kind of antagonism from Chabad? The breast lived, they're running. No, no, to the... every, everyone was, everyone was, was together, uh, united. Was together, everyone tried, tried to help each other. No, every, no everyone, everyone was, was, was uh, together. In, okay. in, because it was a common struggle against the whole system, against the whole situation. Okay. So, so, now continue uh, with how 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 do you look at your Judaism, your Yiddishkeit, your Hasidishkeit as a young boy slash teenager in 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 Russia? Okay, so I was about four four years old or so when I came to Moscow. Yeah, yeah, and. Uh, so I almost can remember very vaguely. I do remember a little bit. Right. Uh, by the way, it was a minion where Shabbos in, in Omsk even. Yes, <laughs> it was right. Uh, actually, Zalman Tuchman had a brother there. Bar Baruch? I don't remember the name. Yeah, no, I'm saying, I didn't know. I don't remember him. I don't remember the name, but I know. I remember the, um, my family talking about that, uh -huh. mentioning the name. Is he the one that came there to Israel after? No, I don't think so. Mm -hmm. Okay. But I'm not sure. Okay. Okay. Um, anyway, we became, in, 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 in what I remember, 
we moved Moscow. to, to you, you moved Moscow. Moscow. Yeah, it was not easy to get into Moscow, but again, through job, through whatever, we were able to, to do it, and but not Moscow itself, in the city on the suburb, because in Moscow, it was almost impossible to, to, get, to, to get to live in Moscow if you didn't live there from before, uh, in the city itself. What, but, what, uh, year, what, what years are you, what years are you talking about? Nineteen fifty-six. Uh, okay. Yes, and uh, uh, so we lived in a place called. It was in the in, to the north of Moscow. Actually, it used to be before the war. That's where Babro Mayor lived. Mom is not far from where we live. And uh, what the, uh, the, the, you know, Mayor is that Mayor? It is a little city. A little village, right? No, 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 but no, but he lived the but before the war and still in the beginning of the war, he lived in he lived in Moscow, but he lived not in the city also, he lived in the suburb. I thought he lived in Malachavka. No. Uh, maybe for a while at some point also before, maybe. But uh, I I'm aware that he lived, you can you can read it in the book, which we answer uh, uh, in yeah. the book. You can yeah. read where he lived in a place called uh, Mamantovka, Tarasovka, or something like that. He lived in those places, and we lived right, right not far from there. Okay. Our, uh, our place was called Klyazma, okay? But it's, uh, it's about like 15 miles from Moscow at the time. But now, now Moscow became even uh, even uh, expanded. Now it's only maybe five miles from Moscow, whatever. Right. Uh, okay, fine. But... Uh, or, or maybe a little more, but now, yeah, it's closer even to the city itself. And uh, at the, at where we moved in the same place, that's why we kind of maybe chose that place, lived the family of Hazan. And uh, also that place had kind of a concentration of some, uh, of some Jewish people. Everywhere were Jews, everywhere in Russia. And especially around big big cities, because although we even had to move out of a small state, a small city, because even before the war, because it was impossible there to hide from the sex and from whatever. Everybody, everybody knew each other, so we moved to bigger cities, and uh, so we, we so there, there was a concentration in that particular place, a bigger concentration. Was also some like in places probably heard the name Perlovka was in the same the same direction north of Moscow, and uh, and of course Malachovka was uh, to a different side of Moscow, um, more to the where was it doesn't matter it was more okay. to the yes more yeah. to the to the, to the to, yeah more to the east uh, okay. southeast something like that right. I guess. Talk okay. about the chin of the education. Right, right. So we, 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 so we moved to that place, and uh, that place still had had the uh, had the kind of, uh, of uh, I remember still was a minion a minion where not just Shabbos every every Monday and Thursday was also a minion, and of course some if someone had your said was well, three three times a day a minion, okay was in and. Uh, Rosh Hashanah and Kippur still were probably, I don't know, I would say close to 100 people, which I remember still. Okay. And uh, at one time, I remember in Kippur, they came and they uh, closed up the place and took out, took away all the religious articles and uh, they made pictures of all the younger people. And it happened one time. Um, it's the only time that I remember. I was still very young then. Uh, but then, so we were close with Hazan family, but my, my grandfather was actually teaching some of our children and, uh, and was, he was teaching on a more steady basis. He was a teacher of children of family Friedman who, were, who was a nephew of Hazan. Hazan's wife. We were Buyan Rhsidim, and he was the only survivor of his family from 
from his side, besides the Rabisol Friedman, who uh, who were managed to leave Russia after the war, was who was a cousin, first cousin of his. And uh, so Maizeda was really a steady teacher of his sons. We all live in Arsasol, Benyabuyan, Arsidium. And uh, uh, he was a teacher of Hazan's children for a while, for here and there and different uh, times. But he was reluctant about Hazan to, uh, he found dollars because the Mazeda didn't want to take money. And he felt bad about it, not for someone who come, should come and uh, spend time. And it was, uh, and the, the, main, the main thing that was, it was a very big danger. Uh, according, at least nominally, according to the law, you, you could teach your own children. In practice, it was not tolerated even then. But according to the law, it was okay. But to teach someone else's children was officially a crime. So, and he, and he did it. So, so, but he was also the teacher, my teacher, my, my Zayda. He actually, because my father worked long hours in order not to work on Shabbos. He had to change many different professions and jobs and uh, won't work long hours. He didn't have time for it. My, tata, my father still managed, uh, he had the schools to learn in Tim Hatmimi. That's how he became a uh, Chabad Hossi. In, in, during the war in years in Tashkent was Tim Hatmimi and he, was still, he still studied there. So be, yeah, and and my uncle, my all my uncle, my Zedo, Israel Olidor's son, Mordechai Olidor, also became a Chabadnik because those were the all kind of the only place in uh, where st we still had some 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 yeshiva during the war and uh, during and the, after the war, the most stadium was still Chabad. So people like my both my Zedos, for whom it was more important that the children should be Reshumayim and the safe room, it was, they would rather than become uh, to learn Chabad if this was the only option, even though they themselves were not Chabad Chassidim. Right. right. So, my, so, my, so my father became a Chabad, and he still, he still learned in, Tash, in Tashkent and at Mimim. He learned Barbaris Bar Bar Sol Neveler, and then Moshe Karalevicher was his, a teacher of a couple of years in, in, in Nigla and Rabiyana uh, Poltava, Rabiyana Khan uh, was teaching them Tanya. He was his Mashpia. Yes. And right. So, but my father didn't have time much to spend. He also had to prepare. He was a Balkari in Armenian. Whenever he had a little time, he had to prepare for that. And well, his, his own, he had a little bit his own children, but he didn't have time really. For me, much so. My Zayde was uh, my Zayde was a real bantera. So my Zayde was the one who was teaching me, but not just teaching me, also giving me. Uh, he was he was already retired. He didn't work. He had time, and he was giving me really a drocha in general. Okay, my Zayde, I must say, well, uh, I have to say, stop yeah. for a second. Could yeah, you could you explain that last sentence? My Zayda gave me real hadrocha. Could you give me yes. an example? An example. Okay, so I wanted, I wanted to say, that's exactly what I wanted to say about my Zayda. Okay. Even though he was very, uh, was a cop man, he was a kind of intellectual and yeah. was a bentera, he had unbelievable emun of shuto. And he believed in Ashgoha Protis of the Derach of Tirasa Balshemta all the way. He was actually descendant a descendant of Talmud of Al Shem Tov. Yes. Which, which, which Talmud do you know? Oh, he was, uh, was, he was really not a close descendant, but he was a descendant of, uh, of Bregdalia uh, Milinitz, who, who was a town, still a Talmud from Al Shem Tov. Yeah. Now you're talking about yeah. Yosei, Yosei the Reb Mordechai No, Yisrael Olidor. Reb Yisrael Olidor. Yeah, so he it, was, it, it, was, it, it was Reb Yisrael Olidor who, 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 who gave you the Hadrach. Yes. Because they, the Mordechai Sirota lived in Tashkent. Oh, he stayed All in Tashkent. Years. Right. Yes. 
Okay, continue. Okay, yes, and uh, uh, and uh, they the lived uh, li li lived with us basically over, over years, and uh, and my he together with, with, with my grandmother they were taking care of us children because my mother also worked full time. Right. As a, as he became a math teacher because as a teacher she was able to make the schedule not to work on Shabbos. Right. You okay. Said. He was a, she was a teacher in high school in college right. teaching math. So okay. she was she was very educated. Yes. And uh, in general, the rabbis mentioned that, but it was much more difficult actually for women to to uh, keep Yiddishkeit and stay from in Russia because a much bigger challenge. Because, why? Because the boys were still taught to Terra. And they were sent away when it was still possible, when it was somewhere to, where to sent away. Or we were hiding them as much as was possible in the years. My years wasn't possible, but whenever it was still possible. But the girls, in order kind of to show that they're not against the government, um, most people sent, most cities sent their girls to school. Right. So they were more indoc indoctrinated in those schools and had more challenges with, with Shmir Shabbos. And, uh, and many, many didn't withstand the challenge. Right. And, yeah. So, uh, so my, my mother, Baruch Hashem, was one of those who did, who was, was succeeded all the years. But, uh, but it was not easy, to say the least. Okay. Right. But, uh, right. And, um, and 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 once you mentioned your mother, just for a second, yes. Um, was she educated by her father in in Yiddishkeit too? In other words, she, from what you're telling me, she was a Mulumedis, a, 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 a serious, you know, smart and educated um, in secular studies. What about in Yiddish things? Okay, you, you mean she she Shabbos knew from home all the things that she had to know. Right. And uh, she obviously knew the basics uh, of, of, of Humesh, of uh, how to daven and things like that. But uh, no, she didn't have a real, real education. She didn't, like right. girls having, having here, no, she did not. Right, okay. okay because at, the, at previous years, when he was younger, my Zaid also had to work for long hours in order not to work Shabbos. Right. He was actually working as a bookkeeper, accountant, whatever. That's what he became. Right. Uh, and also was able to keep Shabbos that way all the years. And, but uh, he also didn't have that much time. Whatever time he had, he had to devote to his son. That's how it was. Right. I understand. Yeah. I understand. Yeah. But, yeah. But, yet you're, but yet you're saying your Zayda was a Bentayda. Yes. Okay. So. Okay. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, go back. Go back now to your to you, what you're yeah. saying about yourself. Yeah. All right. So my my Zayda had a very strong mama shop in Teiras about Shemta believe in Ashgoch and uh, he, together with being an intellectual, he pushed had a moon of shooter, very strong one. And uh, and that and and that combination is is not always so common. <laughs> and uh, yes, and uh, uh, and so he was, had a lot of a spawn on me. And, what you're, say, what yeah. you're saying is that someone was on those days and those years and was so you know bright and and, and knowledgeable. You know, their usually their amuna was weak compared to their intellect, right? And and what you're saying yeah. is what, what was unique about him is. Yes. That together with a strong mind and yes. and as being a bentay and all that, yeah. and Munab Shuta was the Asai, the foundation for yes. what, for for, he, for who he was and what he thought and what he believed in. Yes, I understand. He was and, he was and that made an us, impression on you, and that made an yeah, impression. He on was you. telling us, me and my sisters, a lot of stories about Shemta of Tzadikim. All the time he was reading us those stories, telling us stories. Yes. I understand. Oh, sure. Conti continue. Yeah. And uh, and obviously, when he was teaching me how he was teaching me Chumash and, and Mishnayis and so on, and then Gemara, he was he was my teacher. The problem was, 
sometimes it's hard, that's, that's just the fact. Sometimes it's hard to learn from someone who is emotionally involved with you. <laughs> and, uh, and I was very close to him, with him. Uh, but sometimes it's, hard, it's easier to learn from an outside teacher, but it was very hard to get, on, to, to get anyone. It was almost impossible. Also, he, he couldn't teach me about Chassidus. He, learned, he himself learned, learned at, at some point, Tanya and, uh, and Lukudera, right. he did. But, uh, but he learned also a lot of Polish Chassidus and he didn't understand really about Chassidus the way Rabat Chassid understands it. Okay. And uh, so he was teaching me basically Nigla, not uh, okay. Now, uh, now, yeah. all the, during the time that he learned with you, yes. did, did, was there a, were you aware, were you aware at that time that there was a Rebbe and, and anything about Lubavitch or, or not really? I, I tell you, tell you the truth, I knew that there is a Rebbe, but we didn't know any details and knew nothing about the Rebbe. I one thing I knew that he was uh, what he was from Ekaterina Slav and Petrovsk and when his father was was the Rebbe. But I did. I didn't. I didn't know nothing. Nothing about about that. And just what I, we knew a lot about and heard about the, a lot of stories about Rabbi Rayat, right? Of, whom, of course, my father even never saw. And for that matter, my grandfathers also didn't because we were not about to see them. Okay, but uh, uh, but we heard a lot and had very large respect for him for what he was doing, what we heard right. about him and everything, yes. And uh, so, so the Rebbe Rayat was um, a lot uh, which we knew about. And of course, Rebbe Rashab, because I still were a lot of older Chabad Chassidim who learned the Lubavitch, Lubavitch itself, and heard the memorial from Rebbe Rashab himself, and learned the Tzadmimim there. Those I knew on quite a number of them. And Wait, over, so, over there in, 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 in Russia, live? yes, yes. And uh, we had even one in uh, living, uh, I, even two of them I, I knew who were living mamas not that far from us. Who were yes. they? Do you remember their names? Uh, one, one was called Rabnoir Gusinski. Gusinski? Yes, Rabnoir Gusinski. The other one was called, I'm not sure he learned the Lubavitch, Lubavitch, maybe he learned the Neville, I'm not sure. We called, we, we called, uh, we called him, Rabian, he was called Rabianko, Yan, Yanko Politsker. Politsker. Yes, but it's the same as Avro Mayor, you know, people have been called people by last names. Right, right. And he I, kind I, of I, kept, yes. I never, he I never of, heard these two names, never. Okay, okay. Gusinski was actually his last name. Okay, uh, okay. Right. Right. Uh, right. Mm. So you, you, you knew, you knew, you saw I it. Remember, I, I, I also, I, rem I remember the father of Rebleib Hatsernov's father. I think his name was Rom Hatsernov. I'm not sure. Uh, uh, we were, we were more, 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 more Hasidim were still from older times. So of course, Moscow were more Hasidim. Uh, of course, we were friendly, knew Rabbi Rabschner Pinsky, and of course, Rabbi Dokolasher, and from Alachovka, and, uh, and, 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 and a number of others, a number, a number of others. Uh, just don't recall right, 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 right no, now. Yes, yes, you, you, they, they, uh, right now. Yeah, that's, yeah, yeah. That's, but, that's, but, it's good examples. Yes. But, but, yes. Ne but nevertheless, the yes. talk, in the t what about, let's say, you had, you said, Minyonim, Monday and Thursday and Shabbosim and all that. Yeah, but okay, later years was only Shabbos. And some, oh. someone had your said, we didn't have already Monday and Thursday. Okay, not, not okay, but, but I'm saying, okay, by a kiddish, there was a kiddish or a habrengit, right? Did, did the Hasidim not talk about who is this new Rebbe in New York? It's the 1950s. Where did the Rebbe? Is there, people, 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 we didn't have a meaning of Hasidim. Most of the people of Armenian were people, just older people who already still remembered, still learned something in Haider in olden days. 
uh, who were not even from the during in, in the intermittent years. But then when we became older, we started to go to shul, shop, whatever. And those were the majority of people in the minion. We had ah. only a few, a few Hasidic people. Oh, so we were okay. afraid even to talk about such things. Right, right. We never knew who is who and who is what, you know? Right. right. Okay. So when we, we got together with, with, with Hasidic people, my kind of only Hasidic people, only at, at some Hasidic events or some, some, some Hasan once in a while or Bar Mitzvah or a breeze. Otherwise, and the Moscow is huge, and everybody was uh, lived in different parts of Moscow and suburbs, and was this distances were big, and was not so easy to get together. Right. And uh, right, like uh, like in Samarkand, it was a small, much smaller city, and the city lived more or less in the same neighborhood, so it was very different in that respect. Uh -huh. Even though, even though probably Moscow had more more Hasidim, more from Eden than Samarkand, maybe. Right. But 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 were dispersed, very much so. And uh, uh, yeah, uh, but, but okay, because sir, in the was the one. Yeah. Let's say one last question before you yes. take. Yutas Kislev, did you did you get together? Did you know about Yutas Kislev or not? I'm, yes, we knew about Yutas Kislev, yes. Even, even non Lubavitch Hasidim, like this Friedman, who was a Buyaner, still celebrated Yutas Kislev because it was Ms. Richard's Magis Yorzeit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, 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 Yutas, yeah. so, yeah, Yutas Kislev was celebrated, yes. Uh -huh. And Aaron, Aaron Hazan had, had Edims who were Lubavitchers. Chabad Stadium, Greenberg, his older stadium, Ramesh Greenberg, and uh, uh, also became a Chabad Hossi during the war because, again, for the same reasons, and it was not from home before. Like, and uh, uh, and then uh, his stadium became a Michal Mishalovin, also be, was a stadium by Hazan. He lived in, he lived in Samarkand, but he used to come a lot, spent spend Tishrei. In, in 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 with his father-in-law, and so I got to know him. I was around was around him too. Oh, but uh, oh, you, you got to know that Michal. Yes, Michal is the one who's a mashpia today. In Nachos Achabat. Oh, yes, yeah. He's, a, he's like a pain in the. Heat. Yes, too. Okay. <laughs> yeah, and now, uh, well, of course, the other see the sheet in the mask. We have no. Uh, uh, my, uh, Vermoshe Kassanelbogen, all of us all in. Yeah, and uh, yeah, still, still uh, some, yeah. And there are many others still in Moscow, yes. It was Rabbi Gessel Rubashkin had a brother, Rabrom Rubashkin. Hmm. Yes. Never heard of him, yeah. Yes, Rabrom Rubashkin, his son in law was Naftoli Kravitsky, was his son in law. Oh, okay. Yes. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. His wife actually was. Rabbrom Rabbrom Rabashkin's wife was a daughter of Mayor Simcha Ah, yeah. <laughs> Mayor Simcha, you do it. Yes. Okay. And uh, I, I have. I used to. I was in their house, in their home, for different reasons, and you know, quite a few times too. Okay. And mm -hmm. uh, we lived in. The, we lived close to Malachovka, not the Malachovka itself. It was, mm -hmm. A place okay, so so yeah. let's go back. Okay. So, so uh, Rabbi, uh, also our friend was uh, Rabbi Saul Konsan, his family, his son in law was uh, Bisk. Oh, yeah, yeah, right. And uh, many others now I'm mentioning just whom we were close, kind of. And uh, so uh, Besides my Zayde, Ashpo and me had the family of Rabban Hazan, because he was a unique family who was openly from, who did not hide it, and the children were openly from, kind of. But still, in my times, it was impossible not to go to school. We would take away your children if you didn't send them to school, and you couldn't hide, you couldn't hide the, those times around Moscow. It was not like... Uh, whatever. The only person I know who was still was hidden was uh, Motel Kanelsky in Malachovka, but uh, it was very hard. It was just for a few years, whatever it was, and uh, when we left Russia, and uh, uh, 
but it was in general, it was, it was impossible to to hide to hide children. Just you know, right? Uh, you had to, yeah, you had to tell children sometimes for a doctor or whatever it is, or this or that. But it was impossible to to not to pretend that they are someplace else with some relatives or whatever. If it was possible, maybe for a short while, but it wasn't possible. So everybody had to go to school. And in school, they indoctrinated you everything against Yiddishkeit. And, uh, and you had in the, and at home, you, it was, that was the biggest challenge. I really actually wanted to talk about it, but I don't know how much time we have now. But we had to, to, to you had to have that strength and you had to know, obviously we knew Russian, we had to know Russian. Um, my, grand, my, my grandparents talked to us in Yiddish, but we had to know Russian too, and to, to learn Russian because on the street, you, you couldn't talk Yiddish. You, had, you, you, didn't, you, you couldn't even let anybody know that you know Yiddish. And, but you had to know already from the very young age, what to say, what not to say, what to say to, say to whom, what not to say to whom. And in school, you had, you had to go to school and you couldn't say anything what in what you really believed. You had to pretend. There was a game, a game of pretending. And, uh, and you had to be smart about it. And uh, it, 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 it was a very big challenge. It was very difficult for, for children to do it. And, uh, and they, they were kind of, we had to, we had to get such hinuch that was part of a big challenge besides teaching us, besides giving us, uh, giving us Yiddishkeit to, and to be strong in it, to, to know also what, how to behave, what to say, what not to say, and how to, to, to navigate all that. And it, it was a very big challenge. Bor Hashem, I, I, by nature, me and my sister next to me, her name is uh, now married name is Pressman. She lives in Jerusalem. Uh, we, we kind of were more kind of an intellectual side, and more intro, introvert types uh, to, to some degree. Me maybe more than my sister, the private more the private people. But I had my my next sister was more social and outgoing personality. So, so, from, so from very young age, not just to know what, what to say, what not to say, and keep your mouth shut, and whatever, it, it was a very big challenge, and it was dangerous if we would say something which were not supposed, the authorities were not supposed to know about our parents, about our home, what we, what, 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 what we eat, what we don't eat, and then how we get our kosher food possibly, or, or anything, how we celebrate Yontev or whatever it is, or why, why, we, or why we don't want to go to, shul, to school Shabbos, or if we go, we don't want to write or whatever. It was a very, very big challenge. But the problem, the, the, I know, I think the saving grace a little bit was, but it was a game of pretending not just from our side, also from authorities. I believe that they knew, we didn't know the details, obviously, but in general, they understood that they knew that we are religious and why we don't want uh, things like that, about Shabbat, Shabbos, or whatever. We, but it was easier for them to pretend that they don't know. Right. Because if they would uh, kind of show that they know, they would have to do something about it and be responsible for it. And if they wouldn't reach results, desired results, they would be punished too. Yes. Okay, for not giving us the right education, you know? Right. So, right. So, so, so it was a little bit game of pretending and it was, everything was cynical. And there were relatively few people who really believed in communism and socialism and all those things. Uh, there were such people, like, you know, like my sister had a teacher who really believed in it. I had a teacher, actually a Jewish teacher, whose father himself used to go to Armenian sometimes, okay? And uh, so she knew, but her husband was a, was a member of Communist Party because of his job or whatever. So we were very much afraid. 
but but she kind of still both because it was easier to pretend and uh, and the yam on the other hand because she still kind of had a feeling for for, for uh, so the let us go especially as long as you could provide some credible letters from doctors that your health is there, that you need to, uh, treatments on Shabbos, that they, whatever, which we had friends, still Jewish doctors who would give such letters, such documents, but it was not easy. It's easy to say about, to talk about it. It was very difficult and very dangerous to do all that. But as long as there was some credible backing that she could pretend that it's all, all okay. And as long as we were kind of, uh, honor students, me and my sister, so it, it, they let it go. We kind of close their eyes, so more, more, right. more or less. Right. Up to but, a certain but, point. But go, go, yes. you were saying, this was all, yes. you're saying all this because you started to say that Rabaran Khazan and his family had a big impact on you because they were not mm -hmm. scared no, no, not just the, not just because of, I'm just saying they were unique. I mentioned they were unique in that way. But just now, not just because uh, how the how the house was run and how and then we had a lot of children and how every everything was run and, and how it, we were kind of our friends and uh, Aaron Hazan was very close with me personally, kind of. Uh, he liked me very much and we, I'm a kind of on a personal level also, and uh, so it uh, and he was uh, he, he and he was uh, very genuine. He was uh, one. But by the way, I think one of the better books about uh, uh, that period, he himself wrote a book, Deep in the Russian Night, and was translated yes. in English. I, I have it. Right. Yeah, but, but he writes more about his own family, the history. But at the same time, he had to give a background. So he mentions uh, what, what the situation was. You can see that from the book. And the other good book is Samarkand, which Rabila Zalsman wrote. Yes. But Samarkand, which is very truthful, How, and it was also about kind of my period of time. However, the difference is Samarkand, Moscow, and Samarkand, like I mentioned, was people were more together in a smaller place. Also, the population there were Muslim, who themselves were still more traditional. Right. So uh, they themselves also kept certain things. So they were more, it was easier to, they, they kind of uh, understood more and let it go, number one. And number two, this, the culture there was of bakshish, of bribes. This is just in their blood. So it was easier to bribe them. It was still dangerous, and you had to know how to do it. But like say, my Zayd, the Mordechai was able to make matzis, keep a meaning, because he just paid real se monthly salaries to all the policemen around the neighborhood, the neighborhood, everyone. OK? So but he, you have to drink vodka with them, become a friend of theirs. He knew how to do it, not everybody, and, but, it, but it was possible still there to take that chance. In hmm. Moscow, it was impossible to do something like that because it was too dangerous. You mean in, in Moscow itself, not in the little suburbs? In, no, in, in, in the suburbs too. I mean, it was impossible. It was hmm. impossible even to try to bribe someone. It was uh -huh. too dangerous for both sides. Both sides were afraid, too, too much afraid. It was it was not possible. So this was this was not one of the options. Right. Now, how old were yeah. you when you were impacted by Rabar and Hazan? How old were you at the time? Oh, from my from 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 the time I don't know from the time that I remember him well, like say from the time that I was six years old until they left Russia. When they left Russia, when I was about fourteen, of oh, they, they left Russia like five years before we did. Uh-huh. They left Russia like in 1965? 66. Uh -huh. 66, just before Rosh Hashanah of 66. Uh-huh. So oh, all, they, all, they all, those, all those years, all those yeah. years, um, he was a big influence on your life. Yes, um, true. But yeah, this, probably probably next to my Zeder Bistrol Olidort, yes. Right. Okay. And okay. Uh, okay. Also, I did travel to Tashkent because I have my Zayde Bob there. So I, I had a reason to travel there. I was, I spent there when I was already 11 years old. I spent there like probably four months and some from point. So I, I learned some, some there. I got some friends a little bit. But later, 
uh, when I had uh, already got older and I already finished the high school and I was kind of more free to travel, I, 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 I spent there when I was already 18 years old, I spent there another also about four months and I became very close. And I, that's where I learned more cities there and I became very close with my friends uh, who, from, from, uh, from Chabad families. Uh, yeah, so I, and between also I traveled here and there. And so in other words, yes. tell me if this would be correct that yes. you, you really became a, a Chabad Chosid and, and looked at yourself as a Lubavitcher Chosid when, when you went to Tashkent as not, a after not, high school. Not, not, not really. I was already, I was already kind of uh, held myself as a Chabad Chosid already even before Bar Mitzvah. I was davening in Nusachari and, uh, and I was saying Chitas as soon as we knew about Chitas as soon as whatever. Uh, you know, you... okay, okay. I did not know because you said that you know, yes, that when you right. went to Tashkent after yes. high school, you yeah. know, you I, I you started to learn, you said you started to really, oh, I, no, learned I learned to see more. This. I said I learned more, more, yes. more, yes. more. Who, who, who taught you Hasidus then in Tashkent? Yeah, more with my friends. I learned also a little bit with my uncle. Uh, who by, by, by marriage, he became my uncle, Rabelipa Klein. Oh, yeah. Yes. And uh, I, I, then I had, had friends and I had, uh, yeah, we had a lot of Abrengans. Uh, yeah, it was a real, we were real in Tashkent. Uh, who, who, who were the oh, friends? Who were your friends? Rab Sholem Yeah. Yes. He, he, uh, he was a, uh, just, just to see him daven, how he davened. Uh, I was in his house. He davened just a vochadik in Mayrib. How he davened each word, like counting money. Uh, what, uh, he, <laughs> and and yeah, I was there was the Garelic family, and uh, which Garelic? Lozer Garelic, Lozer Garelic. Yeah, his father and his brothers and Lozer. Yeah, Lozer was a friend of mine. Yes. Yeah. All of us all in. All yeah. Of us all. yeah. Yeah. So, so those are the friends. Uh, yeah, Shleima Galprin, that, that whole group. Yes, Paris Lane, Lozer Vilenkin, Rebel Vilenkin, for Kwakabad. Yeah. Now, so during those Fabrengans and during that time, there was more conversation about uh, the Rebbe of Brooklyn? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, but People still didn't know much. I we, we first got Likute Sikhes of the Rebbe, but the very first books of the Rebbe which we got yeah. was, was was in 1967. Wow. Okay. Wow. Yes. Uh, at the first time which I saw them anyway, kind of maybe someone got someone got already in 1966, maybe for some tourist or something. I don't think anybody had before, but I'm not 100% sure. But right. yeah, but I, 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 I had already at my bar mitzvah time, I had a Sidor Nusachari Til Zavai from the small format from, from, from printed in New York. I, this, I, this I got. This you but, got when at bar mitzvah? Yes, already bar mitzvah time I had one. Uh -huh. Before that one from Sidor Toyro or whatever, but I, the old ones. But uh, yeah, but I got all the seeds which was printed in Rostov. But uh, but but I I got I had already that cedar when I when my bar mitzvah time I already had that cedar. Mm -hmm. But uh, but but other but the rabbis sikhs we got like I said the first time even before the rabbis uh, the rabbis likut uh, sikhs only the first four halakim. Right. Uh, even, yes. Even 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 before, even a little bit before that. I got, I got my hands on on Likuta Diburim of Rebbe Rayaz. Yes. Okay. And so I read it. Um, what What was the What do you, Do you recall yes. Do you call the Do you recall the impression you the Likuta Diburim made on you? Were you moved by it? Do you have any recollection? Yes. 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 Could, could you say so. Could you say a few words about that, please? No. I, 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 
I, I remember the, the whole the whole thing with Rabbi Hayat writes there about Machshav Yeah, that's the yeah. beginning. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> to, to us, it had a great significance because right. we knew of the Rabbi exists, whatever and everything. Yes, right. right. And, uh, <laughs> and and uh, of course, the, the whole story of your base Tammuz, the Meister of the base Tammuz, was read and reread that, you know, and. Uh, and then uh, we also got uh, Sefer Azichenis. So I, re I read the whole Sefer Azichenis. I actually got the second Halik before the first. So I read the second one before the first. I remember that. And mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, yeah. uh, yeah. we're going to stop now, but this has been so special that we're going to do have to do one more segment, please, because we still have a lot to cover. But um, if, with your kindness, I hope next week you'll be agreeable to do one more segment. <laughs> no, because, because this has been, yeah. I, I can't tell you how informative it's been because, you know, I've heard a lot oh, in the general way, but you really gave details and, and, and brought, brought us into what you were experiencing, what was going on at the time. That, that's, that's unique and significant especially for today's young generation, the new generation of Chabad, the future generation, our grandchildren, great-grandchildren. I, I think- I can very, tell very you a little more. I can tell you, I guess I can tell you a little more about um, my own struggles later when I got a little uh, teenager with, uh, with going to school on Shabbos and, uh, and the whole story with me and my sister and um, about- Okay, about I, 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 I do want to hear it. I, yes. I yes. do want to hear it, but let, let's stop now. Let's give the Rebach Ben Pasha La Pasha. So, <laughs> so people, because this is an hour, we already went, it's uh, the time flies. So uh, it's an hour and I'm, I'm really thankful to you. And I look forward to you coming back next week in Mitzvah Shem with the Amish's help and uh, to tell us about uh, that. And also, you know, your short time in Eretz a little bit and then on to New York, uh, we'll cover that. Sai gesund, thank you very much. Okay. Thank you. Shalom. Bye. Okay, tourist service. Come on, bye bye. Aslochan.